Welcome to our lecture online. When you see our next example, you may just want to turn the page. You look at that and go, how do I even start on this problem? But actually, when we use the same technique as we used before, it is not that difficult. So let's take a look. First of all, we must assume that all the pulleys have no mass, meaning they, have, they don't have a moment of inertia, and they don't have any friction, so it's an ideal situation. We need to find out how much force is required to hold everything in place or to pull this object up at a constant speed. The force will be the same in either, either way. So we're going to start with this string right here. And notice that since it goes around this pulley right here, it must have the same tension on both sides. So we can say the tension on this side must equal the tension on that side. And since then this continues on over here, the tension here must be the same, and around this pulley must be the same on the other side. So we've determined that the tension on this whole string everywhere must equal T. Then we're going to draw a free body diagram around that pulley and this block. And what are all the forces acting on the pulley and the block inside this free body diagram? Well, first of all, we can see that we have a force pulling up this way, we have a force pulling up this way, and a force pulling up this way, which also must equal T. And then on the downside here, we have a force pulling this way, and that is the weight of the object. And then we can use the equation that the sum of all the forces in the y direction must add up to zero. That means we have the three forces T up, so 3 times T in the up direction, minus W in the down direction equals 0, 3T equals W, or T equals W divided by 3. But in other words, the tension in this string right here is one-third the weight of the object. Then we can draw a free body diagram around here. And then again, we can say that the tension in this string, well, let's call it T2, and it must be the same on both sides of the, um, so T2, T2 must be the same on both sides of the pulley, and around this pulley as well, so it must be the same as on that side of the pulley, which means that the force must equal T2. Now, relative to this pulley, we have two forces pulling up, they're both T2, and we have one force pulling down relative to this pulley, which is equal to T. So T pulling down and two T2s pulling up. And they must be balanced. So we can say that the sum of the forces in the y direction add up to zero. So we have two T2 minus T equals zero, which means that T is equal to two T2, or T2 is equal to T divided by two. And since T is W over three, we can say that's W divided by three divided by two, or T2 is W divided by 6. Let me, that's over here, so therefore the force equals W divided by 6. So in this particular arrangement, you only need one sixth of force to lift up the object W, and that means that your mechanical advantage is 6 to 1. In other words, you only need one sixth of force to lift up the object that has a weight of W. So that's a pretty good setup. If it weighs uh, 100 pounds, so let's say it weighs 60 pounds, then you only need 10 pounds to pull it. Or the weight is 60 newtons, you only need 10 newtons to pull it. So that's a pretty good setup with a pretty good mechanical advantage. And that is how it's done.